Episode number 24, five tips to using ProPresenter in your kids' ministry with Steve Dirks. Here we go, tribe. This is the Kidman Tribe Podcast. We're helping you as children's pastors, volunteers, and leaders plan, create, and execute incredible life-changing kids' worship experiences at your church. With practical tips, coaching, training, and resources from the best in kids' ministry around the world. It's time to join the tribe. Hey everyone, gather all your kids ministry volunteers for this week's edition of the Kidman Tribe Podcast. We have an expert in the house that's going to be giving us some great tips and ideas on how to use ProPresenter and our kids ministry more effectively. Maybe you're brand new in kids ministry and you're just getting started with multimedia or maybe you're a veteran. Maybe you serve on a volunteer team. No matter where you find yourself, this edition of the Kidman Tribe Podcast is for you. My guest on today's podcast is Steve Dirks, a pro presenter guru. Steve is the executive director for 1230 Media, which is our parent company. He spent over 10 years serving in different churches, serving in lyric presentation, audio and visual content, and helping lead teams and volunteers. Steve lives in Pittsburgh, where he's a part of a local church plant. He loves being a father to Mercy and Caleb and a husband to Rebecca, his amazing wife. He's a huge fan of any sports teams in Pittsburgh and, of course, his hometown, South Carolina Gamecocks. This podcast would be a great one to invite your kids' ministry team to, all your volunteers, especially your team that handles your Sunday morning presentation software and what's happening in your services. Hey, thank you again for joining me on the Kidman Tribe podcast. We'll be right back to you in just a moment. I hope you're ready for a great Kidman Tribe today. You're going to be equipped and given some great tools. Hey, we're going to jump right back in with Steve right after this. For the last few years, our 1230 Media team has had the honor and privilege of producing media content, custom media content, for our great partners and friends at Answers in Genesis. And this year we've partnered with them to produce media content for their 2023 VBS curriculum, Keepers of the Kingdom. We've produced lyric videos, drama videos, instructional videos, countdown game videos, and more that are used in thousands of churches around the world. If you are a church or ministry that needs custom graphics or video, we would love to help you out as well. We would love to come alongside and partner with you in ministry to create compelling visuals to help you share the gospel. You can contact our team today at 1230.media slash quote. That's 1230.media slash quote. Welcome to the Kidman Tribe Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Noble, and I've got my good friend, Steve Dirks from 1230 Media. Really, I think the brains behind 1230, he keeps everything going. <laughs> like he's the, he's the air traffic controller guy that keeps everything. So everything you see from 1230 Media, um, Steve's behind it. Great guy. Steve's been in the church. He's been such an expert at ProPresenter. And I'm excited to have him on today to talk with us a little bit about ProPresenter. Steve, how is your 2023 so far? It's kicking off. It's good so far. What's been going on? Yeah, we're what 20, uh, 48 hours into it. It's fantastic, yeah. <laughs> man. Uh, yeah, had a day off yesterday, you know, it was Sunday, so yep. didn't have to work on New Year's Day. So, yeah, it's great. Um, no, yeah. man, it's it's great. I'm excited for what 2023 holds and looking forward to what God's going to do with our team as we head into the new year. Awesome. So, and, and 1230, 1230 media, 1230 kids, they're behind the Kidman Tribe podcast. They also have some great, great, I mean, incredible resources. Uh, that churches can use, kids ministry can use, um, and Steve's the guy that, that helps us. Yeah, there's a whole team behind it, but Steve's the guy that really keeps everything in line. And I'm excited. Talk to us a little bit about your background, where you've come from, um, what God's put on your heart, and just give us a little bit about who you are. Yeah, man. So I started dabbling in church tech ministry. I wasn't so great on stage. And so I, I do play guitar, but I went from guitar to the backstage and loved it. And so I've been dabbling in, uh, back in the day, it was PowerPoint. We quickly got off that, uh, yeah. and went to pro presenter in the, uh, what was that? That would have been like 2005, 2006 when I started dabbling in pro. And so uh, I did a lot of audio at first for a couple of years and kind of dabbled in pro. And I joke with, uh, people, this might be the first time I'm going to say this actually live where people can actually pull it, but I got my first job at a church running ProPresenter when I really never fully ran ProPresenter before. I just 
picked it up by running his audio and kind of always being near the tech booth. And I kind of had a knack for figuring things out and I knew how to make purpose in work. And so hey, I got my first children's ministry works, dude. Like, well, I know, you, know right? you sit near it enough, you might have to run it. So exactly. that's, that's how I, I, I went into the church world in 2000 and let's see, that was, uh, 14 or 15. I got my first, uh, job at a church in Columbia, South Carolina, uh, running production, graphics and lyrics and then that kind of morphed as time went on to kind of just become the guru of the video side of what we do work with our video producer to help run sundays and make sure that video was working well and pro presenter was helping accomplish that so i have a real passion for training volunteers in that space i have a passion for help bringing people into that space and um, us doing the best job we can not to perform but to set the stage for Jesus to take center stage. And so I love eliminating distractions. I love being a part of setting the stage for people who are serving on a Sunday to serve well, to serve excellently, and that the tech team is hopefully a part of helping that burden uh, decrease. And so I think that goes with tech ministry, with uh, kids ministry as well. At my church, I was also uh, tasked with helping the kids ministry. And so at times we would, we would help them understand pro presenter, understand how to use the gear that's there in that room. Uh, fix the gear. We know that's a lot of times what happens. And so I just have a passion for doing that. I've continued to do that. Even when I um, came on staff with Carl at 1230 media in 2020, I still have kind of kept my, my hand in that ring, so to speak. And so I still help a couple churches on the side and I'll just have a passion for it. So I'm awesome. a pro presenter geek and awesome. that will probably never go away no matter what I do. Well, it's such a great, it's great. It's such a great presentation software. I mean, like you cannot beat it. I, it, it is awesome. Tell me why should like, okay, so kids ministry leaders might be listening. They may not be using it. Why should a church use pro presenter in kids ministry and really yeah. all around? Yeah. And I, I want to preface this with like, I'm not, um, I'm not saying you have to, as a church have pro right. presenter. I think it's one of it's, it's the, it's the industry standard. And so you find that in a lot of production spaces, pro presenter is going to be used. So I think there's a benefit to, if your church production team is on pro presenter, it's very easy to add a site license and yeah. to put that, uh, put a production machine that runs pro presenter in every one. And now your tech team can help be a part of sol solving problems or educating you on what to do. Whereas if you're as, you know, if you're a kids ministry and you're running this own program separately, like for example, at my church, before we went to pro presenter, they were running song show select oh, yeah. and I never used the junk yet. Yeah. <laughs> and it was uh, not like pro presenter. It was not visual based. And so uh, when they hired me, I couldn't support them because I was like, I'd have to go do 20 hours of research to even understand what we're doing. Yeah. So you guys might as well call their support team and wait for them because that's not going to be able to happen this week. So what, what happened was when we made the switch to pro presenter, I was able to, as the production team for the worship, the, the worship side, the pro presenter guy for there, I was able to easily fix stuff for them. Hey, how do I do this nice. here? Let me send you how to do this. Or, Hey, this is all messed up on my machine. Can you come fix it? And what would take them three hours to do might take me 20 minutes or 30 minutes. So that's a great um, perspective. Like you standardize so that yeah. across the board, you know what you're working on. And just yesterday, literally yesterday in our church plant, our children's pastor was working with a new volunteer who was going to be building all of their presentation. And we we were able to, she's like, well, hey, do we have, you know, can we put this on another machine? So he's able to take it home. And I go, yeah, we have site license. Right. I mean, so like it can go on any computer, yep. the power of the site license with ProPresenter. Yep. I mean, it's cool. And chances are, if your church already uses ProPresenter and you don't in kids ministry, they already have yep. a site license. So you right. just need to sign on and go for yep. it. Because more than likely the production team has three or four machines running pro presenter. If they're, if you're a larger church, if you're a smaller church, maybe not. And so that's where I would say, uh, for those of you who are maybe serving a smaller church, I would preface this with saying you don't, I'm not saying you have to go out and spend money on pro presenter. If you have easy worship, easy worship's another company of ours that we partner with. We love serving with easy worship. The guys are fantastic over there. If you have easy worship as a church, keep using that. And there's yeah. ways to get in touch with them and learn how to take and maximize the software. Uh, the reason I've never dabbled in easy worship is I'm a Mac guy. They currently yeah. don't have a Mac version. So if you're, you know, if you're someone who's using that, I don't want to tell you that you have to go get pro presenter in order to, to succeed. That's not the case, but um, there, there's other software presentations out there, but I don't want to necessarily say that if you don't have pro presenter, you need to go make a switch next week. I am just saying that they are in the industry standard. And if your church is using 
multiple programs, you might consider merging into one and figuring out what yep. that's one solution. Is. Even for a smaller church, though, I mean, it it's definitely doable. I mean, yeah. you know, we're in a smaller church, a church plant that started two years ago, and we've used it from the very beginning. I mean, right. so, you know, in that perspective, you just kind of have to value what you're going to put your money into. And, right. uh, you know, when you look at multiple site license or look at multiple machines and site license, when it, you do the math, it's really not that expensive. Right. And so, you know, especially once you get going on it. So Absolutely. I think it's a good thing. Absolutely, man. So yeah, tell so. us, I, like, so I wanted to jump on and I think we talked about doing doing five five things about ProPresenter that kids leaders need to know. And I'd love to hear what you, I'd love to hear those five things. Right. First off, the thing that I always want to tell people is understand how to import content. What I mean by that is when you just import content into ProPresenter, it's defaulting to one of two options. Either it's going to default it as a looping background, yeah. or it's going to default if you change the setting to a foreground. That's very helpful if you're someone like me who wants a specific standard in the nose. But if you're not, and you're just dealing with volunteers and you say, go import that background, and you have it set to stop, then what that means is when they import that looping motion background that's supposed to loop, it's only going to stop at the end of the video. It's not going to reloop. So I, let me just go ahead and share my screen here, and I'll show you guys what I mean. I've imported some content into ProPresenter here, and when you, when you when you import it in, it's mine is currently set to stop. So when I play these these looping backgrounds, it's going to get to the end of the of the item, and then it's going to stop. You don't you don't want that on a Sunday, especially if it's a motion background that you want to continue to loop. And so understanding how the stuff's going to import uh, and then knowing how to change it. So up here, you can right click on any item. You can set the playback behavior to loop and then you can also set it to be a background. ProPresenter is based on layers. And so ProPresenter uses layers to accomplish different things. And so your lyrics are on one layer. Your background is behind your lyrics so you can put the, the two together. And then you also have what we call foregrounds and props that come ahead of the layer. So understanding how to import content is key. If you're having trouble with this, we probably can't spend a whole bunch of time talking about this. But if this is something that you're having trouble with, I would love to get in touch with you. You can change your settings for how stuff is imported and your preferences. And then you go to the import setting. And at that point, you can select how it's going to import content into your into your uh, into your presentation software so understanding how to import content is key that's been key for every single presentation uh, a version of pro, pro presenter even in pro presenter six if you don't know how it's importing that's going to mess you up and if you uh have it set to loop where it can be really bad is if you have it set to loop and you play a video that has audio and that's like a bumper video that thing's going to loop again and you're going to be double dealing with that whole, oh, why is the video looping crap? Right. That's so, a bad day. You've never had that happen before, but I'm sure I have. So right. uh, knowing how that how that's set up is is is, is huge. Um, awesome. That's that's one. Um, another thing that I always like to to educate people on is that ProPresenter, you know, initially offhand, when you look at the screen here doesn't look anything like PowerPoint, right? But there's a lot of things that when you dive into it, it's very much like operating a PowerPoint, like you remembered. Yeah. So when I go into, for example, this countdown um, pr project, you'll start to see here, this looks very similar to what we dealt with with PowerPoint. So there's the shape box, yeah. there's your slide content, there's adding text box, a shape, media content, video inputs, web content, all that starts to look very PowerPoint-esque. And so don't get like freaked out by when you look here and you're like, man, what do I do with all this? Look yeah. at it as the editor is huge because you, when you start to edit an actual project, it's like editing a PowerPoint. And then when you zoom out here, you're now looking at the content within that project. So um, one thing to keep in mind is understanding that this left side is just like where your content is. And so this is how you organize it. Your libraries is like what I, I like to call your filing cabinet. And then within every filing cabinet, you have folders of content there. And then your playlist is what you use to put that content together for a Sunday morning. So yes. don't get freaked out when you initially open it up. Use the editor to try to you know edit each individual project and you can add cool stuff. So if we wanted to add to this 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 um project, you know, the countdown that I just imported, we'll go over here, we'll do a once one minute countdown. I'm gonna use the existing since I already imported it. Now that's on that slide. 
But if you want to do, like you could add, if you wanted to put a text box here that says, welcome to your kids' ministry, you could just click on it. Welcome to our kids' ministry service. Nice. If I could spell. <laughs> Y'all can get after me later. Uh, and then you can put that up here. You could, you know, bold it, underline it, do whatever you want to do, all sorts of stuff. Um, and so now when you play that slide, that's up there. So nice. you can add stuff to your elements to add to, to enhance what you're doing. Um, so don't don't be freaked out. There's a lot of similarity to what we do in ProPresenter and back in the day in Keynote that that carries over into what we do in Power in, uh, in PowerPoint uh, in ProPresenter PowerPoint two ProPresenter. Awesome. Um, yeah. So that would be the second tip I would give you. Um, the third tip would be to organize your content. Now, obviously. I'm not in kids ministry full time, and so I don't have a library to show you. But one thing I always want to want to encourage you guys is, especially if you have volunteers, is to figure out a system of organization that works for you. Yeah. So your library, I, the church I'm at right now that I do some stuff for that the, the the worship service that I do, I have a couple of libraries. So I'll have a song library, I'll have a speaking, teaching, library. And then I might have, which obviously you can't put, so we'll just do speaking slash teaching this. So what I do is create a couple different libraries to kind of sort everything. So I would have the same thing for you. Your songs, put them all in one library. That way they're all there. The people know if I need to go pull a song, I can go pull it from there. Your kids ministry library might be everything other than songs and teaching. And then your teaching library would be there. And what you do is yeah. as you create projects or create presentations, you would put that on in those libraries. So if I, if I create a sermon for yesterday, that'd be in the speaking teaching library. Awesome. But then if I have a song, you know, I'm going to call it graves into gardens. That'll be in the, in the song library. So keep things separate both in your library, but then also in your media as well. So okay. if you notice here, I put kids graphics and kids motions, separate your motion content and your graphic content. I would even go further to say for you, you probably should put like kids backgrounds or worship. So I have a kids worship background library. That's all your worship backgrounds for songs. And then yeah. you have your motion video content that you might play, which might be pre or post service kind of stuff. And then graphics. That seems to me like a really, like you said, it's very foundational. Like yes. you've got to set this up right. Yeah. Got a lot of confusion going on. Yeah. And it, if you haven't done this and you go back, it's just going to take some time. So what I like to say is if you haven't done this and you're two years in and you don't have an organized library, that's okay. Just take what I did, you know, when I was a staff and I was making wholesale changes to our library was just take a little, take a little piece of it every week. So yes. as you, whatever you set up for that week, make sure it's organized and then maybe start going through your library bit by bit, week by week, just do a little bit to organize it and clean it up. And over the coming, you know, 12, 13, 14 weeks, you can have everything organized where this is huge. I think is if you're going to have volunteers, which in kids ministry, you yeah. are going to have volunteers running this in the production world. You may have someone who's maybe been a volunteer for a whole two or three years now, and they're, they're volunteering, but they do this a lot. They understand right. it. But if you have someone who's just walking in sight unseen and doesn't know, you want to make it as easy for them as possible. And so having it organized and being able to call to them, Hey, go pull a background from the worship background library. Well, then they go, Oh yeah. Worship kids background, pull a background and boom. Now you've told them where to go. You've organized it so they can easily execute what you're asking them to do. And I think that's an important perspective and it's really important to understand because these are things that you don't have to do as a leader. You can train your volunteers to do like, right. you know, we always look at in ministry, like what are the things that only you can do? And as a children's pastor, a children's leader, you don't need to be sitting there 10 minutes before church on Sunday morning, putting all this in. You should have a volunteer trained to do it. Right, right. Yeah, and I would offer training. That would be the kind of the fourth, where are we at? The fourth thing now. I would yeah. say offer training. So what I did was I called the master class nights for you guys who might, you know, being kids ministry, maybe it's kid men fun tech night or something like that. Yeah. But do do some training, whether it's once a quarter twice a year where you show your team how you've organized your library or you show your team how you set things up. You show your team how to build out a structure and to pull the content you need. Um, that way, when you are gone, sick, 
people know what to do yes. or just on a week to week basis, you have a team of people that start to get comfortable and understanding what you do, how you organize stuff and go. Are there it. any resources that you recommend to train leaders and then um, to do like these nights that you were talking about? Do you, is there any, yeah, one, you could go to YouTube and look for pro presenter videos. Uh, you'll probably see most of them being done by Brad Zimmerman. Okay. He's the pro presenter guy. Most of those will be more in depth to a specific function of pro presenter. He's not going to necessarily talk about how to structure your library. And okay. so if you're into some of that, where you're like, I'm trying to figure out how to create a training resource to train my team on how to structure my library, that might be something that maybe you get on a call with me, we talk through, do a coaching call with you and kind of talk through what do you want your library to be set up as, and then provide you with some information to then relate to your team. That would probably be more like a customized basis for you. I would say, how otherwise, do people get a hold be, of you? How do people get yeah, a hold of you? If you just go to stevedirks.com, okay. you'll get to a, a landing page that has all of my contact info. We'll also, uh, I'll be happy to get this to you, Jason, but we'll put it on the page when it releases. If That's you go right. to the page where this, this podcast dropped, you can do that. And I would say, yeah, if you, if you have some specific needs about like, Hey, you know, our church is different. We got some specific nuances here of how we set up our library. I'd love to meet with you. We could take some notes, talk through how to set up training for that. And help you do that for sure. You do Zoom um, training. I know that's kind of putting. Yeah, you yeah, yes, yeah. So, yeah, so we do Zoom, Zoom calls. So if you guys wanted to set up a coaching call and we do it an hour long Zoom, we could do that for sure, um, and help you guys set that up on your end. And then I'm sure is you know I'm sure if you Google there there's there's some high end resources like MXU. So if you've heard of MXU now, they're offering some pro presenter stuff now as well. Um, you can find some of those resources out there. If you want to just search YouTube and say, how do you set up your programs in your library? You might find some guys out there who've done it. Um, I hope to, in the coming six months to a year, have some more resources out there to help churches specifically in that regard, because it's something that I'm kind of um, seeing that there's a need for. But Definitely. I'd love to help any of you in the meantime, if there's a, a call we can do that would help you. So let's say uh, children's leaders planning a training for their volunteers. Could they get a hold of you and say, hey, will you do the training on Zoom for our volunteers to be able to... All, all learn it together yeah absolutely we awesome. can do that for sure okay um, yeah we can set that up steve's um, a great resource guys i i challenge you like get this nailed down and that's why i wanted to dig in because i'm like man like if i was doing a training i'd set it up to actually have him do the training for your leaders and walk walk you through what they need to know especially if they're fresh and brand new right yeah what i like to do is for you know for an hour-long training it's it's usually good to kind of cover a half hour of just like showing what the different areas of pro presenter are and then another half hour to kind of show setting up your library getting your our library organized and then there's obviously it's a huge program so maybe if you want a couple trainings where we start diving into in depth how to build song libraries out build show files out we can do that as well boy i think that's a huge huge resource and huge yep. blessing yep uh so let's see we're four so five would be uh an easy way to import songs i don't know if any of you guys have trouble with that at times, I've seen some people that I've interacted with, like I'm sure one, the easiest way is song select, which I don't have enacted on this computer, but yeah, you can directly CD. import from song select if you have a login to it. Uh, so you can log in and create uh, your information, you log in with your information here, and then you'll have access to all the long songs in song select. If you don't have song select or you don't have your church's license, you can always just search Gray's Into Gardens. Lyrics, and I'm going to show you how to quickly import off the web. So if I pull up these lyrics and I highlight these and copy that, and then I go back to ProPresenter, hit File, Import Text from Clipboard, that's going to import the text I just copied. And then I'm going to hit Edit, and I always hit Edit on these sections to kind of figure out how the song is laid out to make sure it's going to be laid out the way I want. Nice. So I'm going to change the title and I'm going to look at kind of how the layout is. This gets into more in depth, but I like to group my stuff in a consistent theme so I can start to go through and group the different elements so that I can easily arrange a song the way I want. That's I'm nice. Do the whole thing, but I'll set that and then I hit import. That'll import that song and I'll drag it into the song library. I'll write it over. And now you've That's got awesome. that song there. So now I've got that song there, and I can easily, uh, what I would do next is use the reflow editor. The reflow editor is like a text editor. 
that allows you to just quickly go through and check all your lyrics. So I can go through and check that everything's right. I can also continue to group stuff. So if I decide, okay, this is starting to be a bridge. So I'm going to change this to bridge one. Anyway, you can finish all that out. You can even nice. create some blank slides if you want to have some extra slides to play around with. And then we'll take, we'll take away some of these. So then you're, now, now you're left with a song that you can then begin to start to arrange however you want it to be arranged. So, um, wow. That's a real quick way uh, of down and dirty pulling a song off the off the web, pulling the text so you don't have to type it all out. Because That's awesome. no one no one likes doing that jump. No, so and nobody should be wasting their time on it. <laughs> nobody <laughs> should. The only time you need to do that is the only time I've ever had to do that is when you're dealing with like a choir piece that's never been done. Yeah. You have to go pull some stuff. But even then, they're usually doing mashups of hymns and all that. But yeah, so that's an easy way to import stuff. That's the kind of stuff that if you did a training with your team, showing them how to easily go and pull content from the web, import it in, and then format it is uh, is really useful. What about like pulling in uh, a YouTube video? Like you're like, man, I want to show this. Do you have any good suggestions on that? Um, So I would probably need to say this first. You're not supposed to pull YouTube right. videos like that. So that's one thing that. So go buy it. Yeah, go buy it. So if you're going to use a YouTube video, what we suggest is you go to the actual user who created that content, get permission from them, and then have them send you the video. Because according to YouTube's yeah. licensing, they do not allow you to do that. Um, so, so YouTube, I brought that up for a specific reason because I wanted people to hear that. Don't just yeah. don't say yeah, you, YouTube does not does not allow does not allow that in their code of conduct. The way that you, whatever you sign to sign up and create an account, you actually commit to that. So what I would say is, yeah, go to the actual user and ask, um, and then yeah, get the actual video from them, and then from there, it's just importing the video like you normally would. Awesome. Um, where I could see using like a web link is like if you have Right Now Media and you want to play something off of Right Now Media yep. that you have a subscription to, then you might might need that. And so one thing that is within the ProPresenter toolbox in the editor is you could actually import a web URL link. And so you could drag this whole thing and go to the actual editor shape and you can put in the URL. So for, nice. for our purposes, let's put uh, 1230 kids. Let's see if I can pull up a, just to kind of test it out, I'll pull up the home page for us. So if I put the URL there. It's uh, uh, it might it might only play a video anyway. You could play, play video, a, yeah. a, a, a clip from there. Okay, so that would be the what the best way to do it if you're having to go via that. I don't love obviously it's temperamental here. You have to do a specific thing, right? So that's why I prefer to pull the actual video file. It's much from better. wherever we're talking, and we're gonna do that. We do that. So yeah, I would I would go to the actual source of that video. Re tell them what you're doing. Request it. Um, many of like, like if you're talking about a lyric video, we partner with Doorpost, Yancey, Seeds, all those big companies that create those. Yes. So if you wanted to get in touch with them and you were having trouble, you could let us know who, who it is and we might have a resource to, to reach out to. But actually taking a YouTube video like that is considered, to the artist's mind, it's considered stealing. I totally so want to, yeah. Wanna so we want to definitely want to, want to help, um, you know, go do that in a way that's proper for both the artists or seed credit and also you but a lot of those artists they want their content out there they just want to be able to have an opportunity to look at what's happening so definitely and to be able to get paid i mean it costs yeah. money to do these things right i mean yeah absolutely the, you, and, and in 1230kids.com there's a lot of those lyric videos already there so you pay a yeah. one month subscription fee which is so worth it and you can get most of those i mean a lot of the videos we're talking about you can find right there right so it is a good way to go and then if you if you're wanting any songs other than the seeds, then you could go to um, Worship House Kids. We partnered with uh, Worship Team TV to make their lyric videos along with Yancey and Doorpost and a lot of those artists, they put their content on Worship Team, Worship House Kids. So yeah. you can actually go and buy the track for 
20 bucks or 15 bucks or whatever they charge and you get the video download at that point and the right to play that video so it's the um, way to go it's the way to go for sure so i have one bonus tip we were at five the the sixth thing i would say the sixth thing i would say is that you can use pro presenter to stream out your like to to do something that you want to record for your ministry and put some content on top of it so you have the ability to actually pipe in your stream to that actual like output that you're sending and then you can actually record that output so I'll mock this up here real quick that while we're talking, okay. but I think that's a huge benefit for if you're like wanting to shoot some videos, not shooting it on your phone, but just actually yeah. shooting it like with the 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 um the camera that's in that, uh it'll be huge. So okay. for me, like I have a I have a um black magic switcher hooked up to this machine. You can use the integrated input within your mac and just start that going and then over here i'll show you this menu so over here at the top right you can actually go live from within pro presenter right onto youtube right onto whatever you want to do or if you just want to record it to your disc which is what i'm doing right now if i wanted to record whatever i'm playing on the output to my disc i can do that right here and so as the content's playing it's now recording if you wanted to stream it, you would just go in capture settings. You would go in RMTP and you would set it up to go to YouTube with your address. And then you would start routing it that way. Wow! So you can easily set up to record, you know, if you guys end up having to go maybe for a couple of weeks, you guys aren't meeting in person and you want to have something that you can send to people, but you don't know how to go do that. Or you can't get the production team in time to do a whole video shoot. You could actually do that with your computer at your desk right right there. So that's a really useful tool. Does it work to stream services that way? Or is it mostly just streaming when that's a one output? Like, uh, you know. You can stream your services. The issue where with the kids ministry would be you're probably using this to actually present to your actual screens in the room. So bringing a video input in probably wouldn't make sense in your kids ministry. Yeah. Um, so if you had a separate machine, so if you were looking to do that, you could get a separate machine, which if you have a site license for pro presenter, that might be very doable, have a separate machine that streams to YouTube that broadcasts your, your Sunday recording out to YouTube. And all it does is in essence has a show file set up that hits, that sends it out, brings the video input in and sends it out to YouTube. And then you could hit start going and then do that. So that would be a definite, yeah, definite possibility if you're set up that way to do that. Cool, man. Dude, yeah, man. thank you so much. Do you have any other final closing thoughts before we wrap it up? Yeah, I think I would just say, um, you know, I think the key here is just wanting to do the best thing you can to make sure stuff is clear and concise and distraction free. And so yeah. I always encourage you to check through stuff. If you have questions about how to do something or maybe to do something differently, if something's bothering you or that is distracting, like ask questions feel free to you know reach out and let me know what's happening and maybe there's some ways that we can fix that. Also, don't be prone to thinking like, hey, I'm dealing with a glitch here and it's never going to get fixed. Pro Presenter loves to help fix the problems you see. So if there's ever an issue that you have that you run into or something's like shutting down or causing a major problem, let someone know, whether that's submitting an actual help desk ticket or if you want to get on a call with someone like me, and we go submit a help desk ticket together. Pro Presenter loves to try to fix what is wrong. So if there's something that you're noticing, do that. And then the last thing I would say is never update your machine if it's running. If you're if you're running great, things are going great. When the new S goes out, comes out, don't go update it. When yeah. a new update message appears from Pro Presenter, don't be the first one to update it. Let guys like me who aren't running it week to week update it and figure out if there's any glitches that they need to fix. So uh, if you're running solid. Keep keep running it. Keep running. Tell your volunteers don't update it. And if you are having issues, let someone know so that those can get fixed in, in a timely manner. So okay, so let's say a church is just getting ready to get started with Pro Presenter. Um, what are the what do you think? Like, what do they need to get started? What's the minimum? Like, help us walk through that. Like, there's children's leaders that are going, man, I want to do this. What do I need to get started? Right. So you you would first want to go pick a computer. Um, you could spec. A PC or a Mac, uh, and the specs are listed on Pro Presenter's site, renewedvision.com. Which here, I want to ask you a question on that. 
my opinion is that max run pro presenter better. What do you think? Uh, well, it's been bench tested with seven that, that max and PCs will both run at five. Uh, okay. I would say that I personally like don't run a PC. And so when you start to get into the PC world, you might find that you're more of a little bit of a minority and that's not a problem. Uh, if, right. if you're, there are some cheaper PCs out there. So if that's what you need to do, but um, I've been out of the PC world for so long, I would understand the program of ProPresenter, but some of the nuances of displays and some of that yeah. would be a little harder for a guy like me. So if you're looking to get support from people ongoing who are friends who have Macs, then I would say you might consider going the Mac route. If you're pretty confident in your ability to understand the ecosystem of the Windows world, then you know you might be able to run that route. But it Is has been possible? bench tested. Is that possible? Well, can you understand the ecosystem? Yeah, I don't know. I'm kidding. I don't know, I'm kidding. I don't know. If you're if you're uh if you're Bill Gates, man, you might you might <laughs> but, but uh I, I don't want to knock it. So there's a yeah. lot of there it has been bench tested. ProPresenter itself says they've showed statistics that show ProPresenter 7 will run fine on a PC. Does that I'm make sure I'm, you know. I'm just a Mac guy? So yeah, I would just say it has to follow the specs listed on their site. So you go to their site, go to ProPresenter, and you actually can see what their specs are. Um, most Mac, most newer Macs right now are going to be fine within that, especially for kids ministry. I would encourage you to consider a bigger hard drive than the standard one. I think the standard hard yes. drives that Mac will put in is like 256 or 512. Yeah, but those tend to you know pretty quick fill up. So if you're running a kids ministry where you're not planning on you know deleting content off of your hard drive every four to five months, you might consider a larger hard drive to store that content. Um, more than likely, you're not going to be doing content that runs crazy graphics card. But if you are planning on doing what I talked about with streaming and some of that, you might consider bumping up the graphics card a little bit. But yeah. you could get a Mac Mini. I mean, my church before we use Mac Minis, um, I wouldn't recommend that for probably most churches moving forward. I would say try to go with maybe a Mac Studio or a iMac. Um, but the Mac Minis do work. Uh, yeah. especially if you get one, I would encourage you to get the one that has more ports on the back than the one that's kind of the base that has like two ports on the back, just would allow you for some expandability, but there's options really any way you go. Um, that's one of those things. It's hard to say, like, go buy this because it really right. just depends on what your church is and what your budget is. I would um, say this, don't skim. Like don't skim. Yeah. Cause like, you're going to buy this for the next 10 years probably. Right. So think about it like, Hey, if I spend a five hundred dollars more now or a thousand dollars more now, I don't have to rebuy this machine for another ten years. Yeah. Um, if you skip now, there's a good chance in five years, ProPresenter adds a couple of new features that then begin to take your 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 base model out of you know out of uh, requirements and then stuff starts to totally. I, and like chances are, you go buy like a two or three hundred dollar PC. You got to be really careful because it may not be beefy enough to run it. So make sure you really follow those specs. Right. For sure. Yeah. So I, I would say if you're looking for an all-in-one, like, ready to go, Macs are great because usually when they come out of the box, you've got pretty much everything you need as far as the computer goes. Yeah. You buy some hardware, and then you're good to go. With PCs, I've always been, a, you know, if you go buy a base PC laptop, you're probably dealing with stuff that's not in spec, and then you'll yeah. run into issues that you're setting up, and why is this not working, and why is this not And there's working? nothing more frustrating than it not working right. right. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, so I, yeah, I, I would say, I would say buy a good machine, uh, buy one that you're thinking for the next 10 years of ministry. That way, you know, you're not going to have to rebuy it. And then, uh, yeah, you have to have the purpose center licensing information. You just need your license key. So if your pr production team has a stream site license, you would get that key from them and let them put that in. And then once you install the program and put that key in, you're good to go and off to the races. You just would need to connect your screens with whatever hardware you need. Um, and it might just be on. one projector to get started. I mean, yeah, if it's just one projector, then yeah, it'll be super simple. Buy a, a high quality adapter off Amazon, um, and then plug that into your machine and get your good to roll. Uh, more than likely, you probably already have, like, if you buy a Mac Mini, you'll need a separate screen, but you might already have one of those from your previous setup. So just kind of look at some of that. But uh, pretty much once you have the computer and the the, the, the key in place for the pro presenter application, you're good to go. You're off to the races and you can start rolling. It's awesome. Uh, and then you can just start discussing, you know, there's other things you can then add on to supplement your ministry, whether that's subscriptions to like 1230 kids where you get content to pull in or other ministries. That's a good deal. Unlimited content. I mean, like, how do you beat that? Unlimited. It's ever growing, man. I got a list a mile long. I feel like with more stuff to deliver to the site. So. It's so uh, good. There's, there's going to be a lot of cool content coming this year for that. 
So. Definitely. Well, man, hey, thank you so much for all your all your ideas, your input today. Guys, go check out stevedirks.com. Incredible resource. If you're stuck on ProPresenter, you want training, anything like that, I want to challenge you. Go get him connected. Go get connected to Steve. He's a great resource and a great blessing. Thank you so much for taking time today uh, to be with us on the Kidman Tribe podcast. Friends, until next time, we will see you. Have an awesome time. We appreciate what you do in kids ministry, and we're cheering you on. God bless you. Thanks, Steve. See you guys. Thanks, man. We would love to hear from you. What are some of the thoughts, questions, ideas you would like to hear more about? You can submit your thoughts and questions to thekidmantribe.com slash mailbag. And be sure to share this podcast with everyone you know. Hey, everyone. Thanks for being a part of the Kidman Tribe podcast. Hey, if you love the podcast, will you go subscribe to wherever you're watching or listening to the podcast on Apple, YouTube, Spotify, anywhere where you get your podcast or you watch, go subscribe, like the channel, give us a great comment and a great thumbs up. Also share it with all the Kidman leaders you know. We would so greatly appreciate it. I would greatly appreciate that. Also, you can find us online at kidmantribe.com. We have a bi-weekly blog. So the weeks that we're not releasing a new podcast, we have a blog that's written by some incredible Kidman leaders that you're not going to want to miss. There's some great swag on there for yourself or for your volunteers. Hey, thank you for being a part of the Kidman Tribe podcast. Also online, you can find our mailbag. I would love to hear comments from you. Love to hear what you'd like us to talk about on the show. Uh, That just helps us to know the direction and answer any questions that you have. Let us know your questions, your thoughts, your comments. You can do that at kidmantribe.com backslash mailbag. So one of my passions when it comes to children's ministry is training and equipping you. You'll have kids from first to sixth grade or birth to sixth grade, really. And then as they're going into youth, they become great leaders. In two weeks on the show, I have one of my great friends, Kelly Preston. Kelly Preston is the Assemblies of God National Kidman Director. He previously served as their Leadership Development Director, where he developed and released a digital training platform for kids ministry leaders entitled Hydrate. Kelly's been in kids ministry for a long time. It started at the age of seven. That's incredible. He has a passion to help children's ministry leaders be more intentional and spiritually effective. He's gifted at preparing methods to help children be the spirit-filled leaders among their friends and in their communities. Hundreds of youth have gone through his program, Special Forces, which is really an intentional way to raise up servant leaders in your youth ministry that are gonna serve the body and beyond. He continues to build on his reputation as a mentor for Kidman leaders and kids camps, evangelists, school assemblies, presenter, and he's a high energy performer. You're definitely not gonna wanna miss this podcast. Pouring Pouring into raising up your youth to be kids ministry leaders is incredible and it will really take your ministry to the next level. Hey, thank you so much. You are loved, you're appreciated, and what you do changes lives for eternity. I'm your biggest fan. I'm cheering you on. You're making a difference. You're my heroes. Go get them, Tribe. We'll see you in two weeks here on the Kidman Tribe Podcast. God bless you. The Kidman Tribe Podcast is a production of 1230 Kids. For show notes, archive episodes, and more free resources for your kids' ministry, visit kidmantribe.com.